So this is going to be the blower portion of my um, coal forge. So what I've done is I bought this, uh, It's I guess it's like a blower that they use for probably those bouncy castles and stuff. I don't really know, I, I bought it second hand off Craigslist, but um, I know it works well, I tried it out. So basically I'm taking this part off because I want to adapt this to a metal fitting because I'm making the rest of my coal forge out of metal. So I'm going to make a little collar that goes in here and I'll weld a piece of pipe to that and I'll probably just scrap this thing all together. Uh, and then once I have a metal piece of pipe coming off of this, then I can weld onto it and add onto it because this whole unit is going to be placed underneath on the bottom shelf of the coal forge. Uh, yeah, and then I'll be able to just plug it in and turn it on whenever I need to uh, fire it up. So, yeah. Okay, so I've got my circle drawn in here. Um, just going to go ahead and start this. Uh, you can see it out on the table there. Okay, it's all done. There we go. So I've got my circle cut. Um, if you don't have a plasma cutter, you could probably do this either with a hand plasma or you could use a um, uh, a torch maybe, if you can get it accurate enough. Or you can just use maybe a jigsaw if you drill a hole. Oh yeah, that'd be kind of hard, but uh, anyways, yeah, there's a few ways to do it. So that fits right in there pretty nice actually. So what I'm gonna do is just drill the holes for the screws and then I will weld a piece of pipe onto here to extend it out. I'm just marking the holes here. So I've just held this, um, kind of hard to see, but I held it over top of the piece of metal. I just dropped this straight down and spun it. Just gonna take it over the drill press now. So I'm just countersinking the holes a little bit for those screws. That way when it actually does sit in there, these screws will be a little bit more flush and they'll go a bit further in. So basically I'm just drilling through a little bit, not, uh, not all the way as you can see here. So, this is going to be the coal bed for portion of the forge. Um, I managed to find a piece that was pretty well the right size already. I'm going 3 16 thick on this one because this is going to take a lot of the heat. So I wanted it to be a little bit thicker than the rest of the forge. Um, I'm just going to put a couple bends in it right now so I'll show you how that's going to work. If you don't have a brake press you can weld separate pieces together or you can um, probably Find someone with a brake press and pay them to bend it for you.
actual sort of dip down portion of the forge. This is going to sit right in there. Basically I'll have a big rectangular cutout. This will sit right in. Um, I'll actually cap the ends off first. And then I'm going to drill holes in here. And this will be where my, uh, where my coal sits. And then I'll have my blower underneath blowing air up through these holes. In order to make this part look a little more streamlined, um, what I've done is I've cut this plate. I actually had to cut a couple plates to kind of figure out how it was actually, what size it was actually going to be. But I ended up basically just going four inches wide. And then what you could do is you could take a measurement of this dimension and this tip to tip dimension and then you can just cut it to that size and then it should just lie in there once you put it in. Um, Really, the best way to, would be is to uh, use a cardboard template first. But I just wanted to do that on both sides. So I'm actually going to cut another piece and do it on the other side. That way I just have that more finished look. And it's uh, the coal, when you scoop it in, you can just scoop it in from any direction. Um, I think that's going to help a little bit. And then after, I'm just going to weld these in right here all along the seams. So right now I'm making what you would call the air box, I guess. Basically this piece is going to be bent up. It goes underneath that um, <clears throat> tray piece that I already made, the trough. Um, and basically this is going to have caps on the ends, but the blower is going to go into this part and this will hold air and force the air up through the holes that will be in the top piece. So I'm just going to weld up these ends here, just tack them on first and then weld them up. There we go, I got it tacked, so now I'm just going to run some beads. Basically just going to run beads like that down all these sides and in here and then I'll have the sort of basic pan done for the, where the coal actually goes. Then I'm just going to drill some holes in here and then after that I'll put the air box underneath that. Okay so I've run those beads um, so I got all this welded in. So basically I have this trough now. Um, one thing I am going to do is run a piece of one inch flat bar along here and weld it so that uh, it's just an extra lip for it to sit down on when I actually put it on the table. So basically the overall table is gonna have a hollowed out hole for this to drop into. 
I'm actually gonna, the purpose of building this is so that I can heat treat this anvil. Okay, so now I'm just welding these uh, end plates onto this air box, which is gonna sit underneath. The um, pipe that blows the air in is gonna go from that end out, and that way, through these holes in here, the air will come up. show you once I get that all welded around. Um, I want to make sure I don't have any holes for air to escape. Like that little one there, I'll have to fill that in. There we go. And I'll do all the way around. Okay, so I've marked out the holes here. Uh, just doing some drilling. Getting all these holes in for the air to come through. So basically, they don't really have to be super accurate because it's just kind of wherever you want them really, but I did a bit of a pattern here. Okay, so I'm getting ready to weld this part now. So next thing I'm gonna do is basically get this part welded onto here like that. So that's gonna, once this is flipped over when I have the table done, this is gonna come out and down and then it'll eventually go to my blower and then I'll basically weld pipe off of this down to the blower okay so I've got this pipe welded on here I've got this piece tacked on so now it's going to be time to uh, weld all the way along here and you can see the underside here so that's the part with all the holes. So when this thing's done, it'll be flipped over and then this will come down to my um, um, air blower, which will come into here. It'll pressurize this air chamber here and push all the air through those holes. I made sure that this, the actual surface area of the holes was not bigger than this hole itself. So if you were to add all those holes together, they would be a little bit less than this size. That way it'll actually pressurize the chamber and push the air out of those holes. I was just welding this and then I realized that I'll never be able to get into this air chamber after. So there's probably going to be coal dust and stuff that falls in there and collects. So what I'll probably do at the end is I'll drill a hole and then put some sort of a cap that I can open up and, and empty this chamber out if I have to. Either that or I may put mesh over the holes that are inside there. Uh, just like a layer of mesh so that the coal dust and stuff doesn't fall down in there. Okay, so I finished the... Um the actual forge table part here, uh, basically just plasma cut this out on the CNC machine. These corners are notched so that I can bend up the sides and have two inch sides all the way around. So I put all the bends into this piece here. Um, technically you don't have to have a break and, and bend this. What you could do is just use two inch flat bar, a two inch by one eighth flat bar and just weld it down the sides. This is just kind of to keep all the, the coal in there. Then I can pile coal here and slide it in. This thing will sit inside there. And I'm just gonna weld up the corners as well. And then I'll weld the legs on, and I may put some wheels on it as well so I can wheel the whole table so around. I'm gonna weld a couple of legs on here. It's just an uh, inch and a half square tubing with a 1 16th wall. Uh, just gonna weld those on there. And the, only, the reason I'm only doing two right now is because these back ones are actually gonna have uh, some big wheels on them. I have some spare uh, small wheelchair wheels, which I'll use for the back, and then I can wheel this cart around.
just to show you what I'm doing here for these wheels. Um, so I've taken a piece of square tubing and drilled a hole in it. And then I put this piece of 7 16 solid round through it and welded it on the other side. So that's in there now. Um, and here I've got the wheel, which I'm putting on there. So I put that on and I've got a, a washer that I'm going to just put over this. So these things won't really be removable. If I ever do want to remove them, I'll have to cut it off and redo it. But basically I'm just going to tack weld this onto this peg. And then basically these wheels will be able to spin on their bearing. And then these I will weld onto the uh, actual table there. So it'll have wheels on the front. Probably put a couple more tacks on this and then uh, do I got the other this one. welded together now, so I've got uh, put a little bit of bracing in there, those pieces. Uh, I got the wheels on, and this is how the tray sits in. I'm actually going to put some flat bar going across here too, just to seal off that a um, little bit of an opening there. And basically, I'll put a handle across here and I'll show you how it wheels around. Works pretty good, you can wheel it all over the place. Gonna be awesome. So I've cut out these little um, brackets. Basically, what I'm gonna use them for is just to go in here, and I'm gonna make a little handle so a bar will go across between these two brackets. First thing I'm gonna do is just tack these in place. Uh, put them right into the corner there. Get that tacked. That tacked. Tack it on the outside here. Tack this on the outside. Alright, so I've got that in place, so now all I'm gonna do is just cut a bar to that length. And then I'll show you once I have that bar welded in there. Um, and this thing's just about done. And then I'll hook up the blower and set up a little a little stand for it down there and then everything will be ready to go. I've welded the bar in there. I actually used stainless for this bar um, just because when I go to paint this whole thing with um, high heat black, I'm gonna tape off this whole stainless piece and then paint the rest of it and then that way the paint won't rub off when you're grabbing this and moving it around and stuff. So let you get a good overview of the thing. As you can see the air box down there. I'm gonna put the, uh, mount the um, blower somewhere around here. I'm gonna basically make like a Probably a, a gusset going over to the middle and then have the blower mounted below the, the pipe there. Uh, I've got the wheels on there, so this thing is just about done and it can wheel around. It's going to be super handy as a coal forge. just had another thought while I was wheeling this thing around. Um, next time if I were to make another one of these, I would put this tray part going across this way at the end opposite to the handle. That way when you're forging, this wouldn't get hot. And it also gives you that counterweight so that you don't have to lift up as much on the back in order for it to actually go up on the wheels. Because right now when you lift this up, you actually gotta lift quite a bit of weight to get it onto those front wheels for moving it. So it's just a little thing that would make Last it easier. The thing I'm doing here is just uh, welding on the blower portion. Um, so what I've done is I've actually welded that flange on a little bit. I didn't wanna put too much heat on it because I don't want it to melt the plastic. So what I'll do is I'll fill this with silicone I uh, basically just tacked it all the way around a bit, fill it with silicone, uh, weld all the way around this. This part's open so that I can put a, uh, a little cover on here that I can flip up or down. That way I can actually adjust the amount of airflow that's coming in. I'll show you how I've done that little holder here. So basically <clears throat> what I've done is I've welded a little tab on here. I've put a little tab of flat bar on this part, just a little tiny piece. I don't know if you can see that, but um, then this will sit on here. Like that. Whoops. Yeah, so that'll sit on there. And then I'm going to take this quarter inch bolt that I have and put it through. Maybe like that. that. And I'll just tighten up that nut so this is nice and tight together. And then this thing will just slide up. 
I'm actually going to put a little knob on here, a little handle that you can pull this up with. And then that will slide open. So if you don't want as much airflow coming through. Oops. So if you want to reduce the amount of air that's actually coming through, you can just crack this a little bit because then it'll let some air escape off of here instead of going up the pipe and into the um, forge itself. Uh, but yeah, if you open it part way, the excess pressure will go up into the forge. So it's just a way to uh, reduce it. If you've got a bunch of cinders blowing up and out of there, that way you can uh, make it so that you're not getting stuff blown at you. And here it is with the bolt all tightened up. So you can basically release however much flow you want. Firing this thing up now, uh, got the blower hooked up and plugged in, so here we go. Whistles a lot though. It's pretty uh, a pretty brutal noise, so you'd have to wear earplugs when you're using this thing. So I'm just painting it up right now with some high heat enamel. Um, it says this stuff goes up to 1,200 degrees. So uh, yeah, I'll probably paint the whole thing with that. And then I'm going to call it finished. This stuff actually dries to a gray color. It goes on black and then turns gray. But yeah, that should hold up nicely for the heat. So I've got it all painted up. This piece here is stainless steel, so when I take this tape off, it'll be shiny underneath. I'm just going to leave that part shiny. I'll just show you real quick here, actually. I guess you can kind of see that. Uh, and then you can get a better look at this, how it's all set up got that bottom part there with the air box painted it all up and again you can see that uh, little flange that opens up Basically pops open like that and the blower it's just a I think it's one of those ones that you use for blowing up like a bouncy castle <clears throat> anyways I'm really excited to try this thing out and I will make a video of the um, forge in action when I get some coal for this thing. Here it is complete. I was actually going to paint this black just so it kind of matched everything. It doesn't really matter too much, but I figured the heat resistant paint might actually help this thing from getting too hot because I'm now worried that this might get hot enough to start melting this. Should have almost made it a little lower, but that's okay. Uh, I'll give you an overview. I made a little cord wrapper thing here. Basically just took two pieces of flat bar and bent them. This comes out two inches and down four inches. Then I welded it on there. So wrap up the cord and keep it nice and tidy. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please subscribe. I'll be making all kinds of other stuff in the future. Um, and now that I have this forge, I'll also be making stuff with this as well as uh, heat treating anvils and stuff like that. Thank you very much for watching.